Hey, what's up? It's Christian from Vision 6D. And today we dig into our CRM project to look how we assign resources. So here we have the planning of the tasks of uh, our project. And what we have to do, it's also to go and to look into the resource sheet. And we find a lot of resources that are already defined into the project and we are going to assign them to the different tasks. Before to do that, let me simply say that um, you can download the file to do the exercise at the same time if you want to do it and to have a copy. It's on our website vision6d.com slash download where you can find this file. It will be called CRM02-1 resources. At the same location, you will also find here the description of the exercise, which is about resources for our CRM project. We are in that great situation where we can assign resources. That is to say that I can decide who is going to participate in the project. In most companies, uh, you can only do that if you are really uh, the head of a lot of departments or if you have the full power of working on a strategical project. Most of us, they aren't in that situation and we have to deal with other department managers and people to find agreements by which they want to work and they can work into our project. That said, today you are in full power into this strategical project. So what we will do here is that we will add resources. To add resources, we need the resource column. If you don't have it, right click, insert and insert, you will add the resource column. The initiation starts with the project proposal. This is proposing what we are going to do into the project. For this, I need here the project manager. This is the work of the project manager. And you see here, I have two project managers, PM1 and PM2. So I decide that PM1 will be in charge of the project. I can also say that maybe it's a good thing that uh, some of the users take part into the project proposition preparation. So. Once I have done this, you see that I have now two resources assigned to that task. And you see here on the graphical part that we also see the list of assigned resources. Project approval, which is the next step. It's the time when somebody is saying, OK, let's go with that project. The money is here. The budget is approved. And for this, of course, it has to be somebody that has the authority and it's why we are taking a stakeholder. What is really good is that when there is the decision that the project manager is also part of the decision. The project manager is proposing and the stakeholder is deciding. We enter now in the phase of planning and planning of the project. This is one of the tasks of the project manager. Doing this, I always think that it's good to have also somebody representing the users that should be part of the planning. And let's say that the integrators, which are the IT people, somebody should also be present when they do the planning session. So I have here three persons that participate to the planning session. What you can see is that we have here red figures that appeared. This is the sign that there is an over allocation of one resource. The resource that is over allocated here is the project manager. Why is that? This is because here you see that we have the task, but they don't have really predecessors. There is no chronology between the tasks. So I'm going to correct it. In order to correct that, I'm going to enlarge here a bit and we see that the project approval doesn't have any predecessor. So we are going to say that project proposal is the predecessor. So for this, I give the number of the predecessor, which is the number three. 
and you see here we have already a certain sequence that came in. But we still have that over allocation because here down with the planning session you see also that there is no relation, no chronology and MS Project made that task start as soon as possible. So for that I'm coming here again onto predecessors and I want to say that we will start the planning once the project approval is here. So for that I'm saying that the predecessor of the project, the predecessor of the planning is the project approval. And we see here that the sequences are one after the other one and immediately here we have the overallocation that disappeared. While I'm doing this I see also that the complete steps which are execution realization are starting as soon as possible so it's again a situation when here is missing the predecessor and I'm going to say that we are going to start once the planning session is ended. So the predecessor is the end of the planning session. With that I have everything that is well scheduled here. So I will move this a bit on the right but you see that we have some difficulties to see the complete project. For that I go into view and I want here to say that I want to see the entire project. So with that we have a better overview of the project. Now we enter into the execution of the project, the realization part and in there we have quite a conventional way to do it and that is to say that first we have conception, then we have system integration, then test and training and then everything is going to go into production and at the end we will close the project. So for the conception we will first do the requirements then we will evaluate solutions, then we will choose and then we'll purchase the system we need. So the requirements, I think that this is a task that can be done by the project manager. I will add also a user about it and a representative from the IT department. So the three people that I have here are the right ones to do the requirements. For the solution evaluation I will go with integrator, project manager and user one and I will add an accountant because there will be some integration issue and I prefer that the accountant is also part and represented. The solution choice then I will take the same group of people integrator, the project manager and user one. This is the solution choice and one thing if there is the choice I would like also the stakeholder uh, to be in agreement with the choices we are making because that person will be the person signing the checks and signing the contracts. System purchase this is an issue that will involve the accountant, maybe a stakeholder and the project manager to make the follow-up and make sure that everything is done when it has to be done. With this we are at the end of the conception part. System integration is where there is a part of IT work. It means that you are buying a solution online but for example when you do the follow-up of your customer at one point you will need to do billing and billing will be done with an internal system. For this reason there needs to be a transfer of data for example uh, between the CRM and the internal accounting system. So these are typical tasks of the system integration part. For this we see that somewhere there is a server that will be installed although that the solution is online and this is a typical task where I can see that for example integrator 1 and integrator 2 can take part into this.
Then we have the application installation and again I will have integrator 1 and integrator 2 work on this. With that part we are done with the system integration and we should have something that works. So what we need to do is to test it and to train the people about it. So to test it I will here in a first step use integrator 1 and two of the users. The functional tests, I will also do them, but there I will involve all of the users in this project and have integrator to do that part. We see that uh, we have here all the people, the resources involved in the tests. So now what about the training? So the training, everyone should take part into the training. So starting with all the users we have here and we will need integrator 2, integrator 1. And I think that even sometimes it's really good that the project manager also participates to the training. So we have all this that is defined, but you see that MS project is screaming People are over allocated, so we need to solve this. And the issue comes here. You see that we have the training while people should be able to work at the same time. So the solution to this is to have maybe a training first. And as we were saying, there will be four days of training in, in all but there are just two days that are needed for really mastering it. So there will be two sessions. So my proposition is that we add an additional task, which will be training two. And the first one, we make it training one. I will reduce the time of training one to here down two days and raise that one to one day. So we have two days of training. Now we need to reorganize a bit the sequences. So we are going to say that we do, um, maybe we start with the first training here, training one. And then the test of the user interface here should follow training one. So we are going to change this and here down we have the tests and we say test follows the training one. And we see that we need also to remove that previous one that was staying in there. So we see here that we have a change, repositioning of the elements. You might pay attention here that in this space that I'm showing there isn't anything. This is what we call a margin. And when you are defining a project, it's really important to have margins. So now what we do we have? We have a training here and after that, we can start the test of the user interface. So in that first training, I don't need to have all the people. So I will change now here who is going to participate to that first training. And I'm going to say I want just the people that will be needed in the test of the user interface, which is integrator one and user one and two. So we have now the training, then the people can do the, the work. And what I want to say, it's once we've done the first training session, the second one can occur. So for this, I'm going to position that session here by saying that it can follow the first one. So we see here training two will follow training one. And who is going to participate? So the resources we assign to this are integrator two, the project manager 
and users 3, 4, and 5. So we see here that it has changed, but you see also here that all those figures showing over allocation have disappeared. So this means we've solved the problem. So now we can go into production. The in production is a date from which we'll start the, the system. So we won't really assign resources to, to this. It is a, a milestone. But during the production run, we will need some people to be available. Of course, all the users, which are, by the way, what we call beta users in a company. There will be much more uh, users using the system, but we have here the ones that are the key users that will transfer the knowledge to the other users. And they are also all those that uh, were present during the tests. And if any issue happened, the other users can refer to those ones. And of course, we have the integrator one and integrator two, as well as the project manager. Now, what is left to, to me once we have this, it's the closing meeting. And at the closing meeting, I think it's good to have all the people that were involved into the project to have them uh, unite and have a meeting and discuss the, the project. Uh, I think it's really important to have the key users, not just the specialists. Because like that, it's also an opportunity to thank them for the work they've done. Usually a user, a key user or beta tester is doing his work plus the project work and often is really a stressful uh, situation. So it's really good to have a meeting where you can thank them, value what they did. And because these are the key elements to a success to your project. With this, we've added what is called uh, work resources to your project. It means uh, people that will work into the, the project. Now, there is one thing that we haven't done. It's that during the training, we need a trainer. So if we go and we look at our resources, we see that uh, we have here a consultant. This could be the, the case, but uh, I've also said that in the end, uh, we are going to pay a certain amount per day for the trainings. So uh, it's a 2000 that we pay. And I would propose that we do it in a different way, like that, the, the training. We are going to say that uh, it's a resource by quantity. And for this, I'm using the type material, which is here. And the material is for one day, one unit. So we can go now to the Gantt chart. And we are going here. I'm double clicking on the training. And we see that we have here the resources. And we find all the resources that go with it. And I will now add here the resource which is training and I need two days of training so I will go here up and this I just say okay and you see that we have on the graph added on the line training with square brackets and the value 2 which means two units of this training 2 I'm going to do exactly the same So with this, we've added resources training of type material. Now we have everything for the training. What is missing is that we need the software. So in some way, we need to have that resource that is the software. So here up, we have the system purchase. And I would like in some way to add here the fact that we've bought the software. So for this, I'm going again to see the resources and I'm going to add
a resource here down, which is the CRM software that I, in short, cut down to so CRM soft. And I will say that in the end, we are just paying something. We don't do any installation of that software itself. So it will be of type cost. Going back to the Gantt chart, we see here that we have the system purchase. We have the accountant, project manager and stakeholder. These are the work resources. And I'm going to add here into the resources the CRM software itself. Like that, I have all the resources I need for this project. The CRM software is a resource of type cost. We will see this in a further video, how to budget this project and in another one, how to cost the, the project. So this is the solution to which I've come till now. Uh, your can be completely different or quite similar. There is no right, no wrong. Anyway, that solution will be available on our website for downloading when we will start the next episodes about budgeting and costs. You liked it, so share it with your friends. Uh, I appreciate also when can I can see some apps, it's really motivating and all your comments, remarks and exchanges are really welcome. And especially don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So with that, all what is left to me is to wish you a really, really good time and hope to see you soon for another video. Keep up, learning is really good. Bye bye. Have a good time.